Hi, thanks for joining me. We're having a tour of the Queen Mary 2. My name's Chris, and I thought I'd show you around this fantastic ship. So let's go and have a look, starting on Deck 3. So the very forward end of Deck 3 is a part of the Maritime Quest, which has images, historical information, and these computer screens that show you the history of Cunard and Cunard White Star and what they have done for transatlantic travel. This is the very forward end of deck three. In there is illuminations, but we come around down this corridor. Now the ship is in a force 12 hurricane force winds today, so excuse the wobbles, but it's the last day at sea before reaching New York. There's all sorts of memorabilia, and then we come through to illuminations, and there's currently a lecture on. But this is the lecture theatre and the planetarium. Before heading down towards the Royal Court, I'll just take you down this staircase, past the mythical themed statues I come downstairs to connections which is the ship's education center so each of these little rooms are breakout rooms where you can have different classes and lectures um, and they use it also for the computer center and there's more of this heritage and memorabilia around here as well as lots of plaques from where um, from where the ship has bit visited over its career. So deck two forward behind Illuminations is the Royal Court Theatre and that's the main show lounge. More of the Maritime Quest. And then we link down here New Star Burst Carpets. Onwards towards the Grand Lobby. <laughs> Casino on the port side. Lobby staircase there, looking up at the Grand Lobby and then Purser's office on the starboard side. Come around, there is uh, maritime art everywhere on the ship. And then we we'll walk down here towards the Britannia restaurant on deck two. It's also accessible from deck three and we'll go past the Golden Lion pub. These panels here depict different continents. Oh, and this one here is interesting because this is the American continent and uh, spoiler alert, if you're looking for Homer Simpson, he's on the American continent panel. It's a bit of a challenge when you come on board the Queen Mary 2. So we have the Golden Lion Pub, London Letterbox, Coming through again, the Starburst carpets and up to Britannia. The entrance to Britannia, again, more maritime history for you to have a look at. There's quite a lot of answers there. We'll go through the answers in a minute. So let's go and check out these exhibitions uh, that we've got from Sea City. Thought some of you might be interested in having a look at these. So there's six cases, and each one is full of wonderful items from the Sea City archives. I was very lucky to have worked with Sea City Museum going through the archives with the uh, curator uh, Maria Newbury, who's 
knowledge on Southampton history is just immense and they've got this fantastic archive of all these items from Southampton shipping history and a lot of that comes from the Cunard era and so there's things that uh, cover the era of QB2, Queen Mary 2 and then all the way back Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, Coronia, uh, Mauritania, Aquitania, Berengaria and they've even got some items from Lusitania as well but of course uh, Lusitania didn't sail from Southampton so that's not being carried on this trip but you can see here Mauritania lunch menus from 1928 the Britannia silver match case we've got newspaper cuttings back from the 1900s there's breakfast menus a lovely model here of Aquitania the menu covers depicting the three big express liners We've got the uh, handkerchief from Berengaria as a Queen Mary souvenir spoon. Into war years here. The Queen Mary stewardess's cap. And the final case over here, we even have a pair of shoes. Stewardess shoes, so quite uh, quite little shoes really when you think about it. That's sort of my hand size and that's how small the feet would have been. But uh, here we go. This one here is the Queen's case, so all Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. So here's the deck three level entry to the Britannia restaurant. Come down the staircase here. Uh, on the port side, it is the uh, art gallery. But on the starboard side, deck three L, passenger car cabins, which is where the photo gallery used to be. The walk through here. You know, the ship was refurbished in 2016, but this still smells new, new carpets smell in this corridor. Go through this door here. We've now passed through the Britannia restaurant and we can go up the stairs to the Queen's room. So you see, Britannia restaurants through here, half into the restaurant there. We're going to go into the Queen's room here, which is towards the aft end of the ship. Very popular for afternoon teas here. Now, interestingly enough, at the very end of the Queen's room is the entrance to G32, so named after the ship's building number. Okay, I might not go in there, there's someone singing in there, but basically it's the Ship's nightclub. Let's have a quick walk across the dance floor. The largest dance floor at sea. Fantastic chandeliers there. We'll try and get into G32s from this side. Here we go. Just another quick look at the Queen's room. to G32s. It's quite an industrial feel in here. We have the bar. And 
two levels in the nightclub. That's the from the second level from the staircase there. Back out through here and we're back in the Queen's room. So quite often in the evenings people come for dancing in the Queen's room and then carry on the party in the G32s. Okay, so on the starboard side now, Queen's room entrance, and we're going to go through Clarendon Fine Art to get back to the front of the ship. There are these lifts here for people who are unable to use the stairs. Art gallery is all set up for a lecture. But that would lead straight back through to the uh, entrance there to the Golden Lion or the chart room. I think it would be better for us to try and get through here from the Britannia restaurant level. D stairway. Kim has four stairways, A, B, C and D. So here we are on the upper level of Britannia. Lunchtime they only use the lower level, so this gives us a great uh, opportunity to have a little look. You hear all the people enjoying their meal below. Fresh flowers on all the tables. Classic Cunard style. Now our Force 12 weather has meant that there's been quite a lot of furniture moved around the place so I think they're still setting up the upper level where the dining room is there with the beautiful mural in the background, rather tapestry in the background. Big tapestry of a uh, Cunard-esque liner entering Manhattan and then back through onto the deck 3 level. Once again, the Starburst Cupboards. He paid about 75 grand a year just on his pension alone. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really not bad. <laughs> and then we come into Sir Samuel's, which is the wine bar and Godiva chocolate, chocolate bar. It's a bit, uh, bit tempting. side of the ship is the chart room which is uh, one of the, the most popular places on board the ship it's a place to enjoy drinks before dinner in time of day new carpets during the refit this leads through to the champagne bar which we can see here Here we are back in the grand lobby on the upper level. Ship's bell. And looking up at the lobby again. Okay, let's go and get into the B stairway and head off to deck 7. Starburst carpets. Looking up here at the staircases, so A, B, C, and D. We were in the D stairway. Now on deck seven, which is another 
area of the ship that's quite uh, popular. Each of the staircases has a different uh, series of art. We have Cafe Corinthia towards the forwards, but we'll go towards King's Court now, which is the Alfresco restaurant. It greatly changed during the big refit. We've got hand washing stations here, and we enter into King's Court through these corridors. Part of the uh, buffet, I think, is the desserts. So tea, tea making facilities, English breakfast, and all the other styles of tea. There's a uh, coffee machine. A number of these throughout: juices, water, and then the secondary little section here where there's uh, sort of sandwiches, wraps made, as well as pastas. Pizza. So at the very forward end of deck seven is the gym. This is the QM2 gym, so it's currently run by Canyon Ranch. And there's uh, all the equipment in here, treadmills, exercise bikes, two rowing machines, which are my favorite thing to use at the gym. Weights and aerobics. It's empty now, four o'clock in the morning, but um, it's been pretty full on this crossing and it becomes quite, uh, quite busy, particularly in the uh, early to mid morning. So we'll go back out and through to the rest of deck seven. Here we go through, there's this staircase here that leads up to the Canyon Ranch up there. Access to the deck. and then an entry to the actual Thalassa therapy pool. I will pull in a picture now from a previous voyage, just so you can see what it looks like. Then we continue along here, Queen Mary 2's Canyon Ranch, down this corridor here to the Corinthia Lounge. Now the Corinthia Lounge used to be QM2's Winter Garden, and it was a nicely uh, decorated but very underutilized space. I think mainly because it was quite a dark space and didn't have any coffee. But now it's been turned into this wonderful, bright, and airy and welcoming cafe. And it uses the same basic floor plan. So I mean, the raised ceiling here with the decoration was from the winter garden. These raised ceiling domes used to have fans in them from the winter garden, but that's still there. Uh, the stage is still there from the winter garden. The white self-playing baby grand is still there, but the furnishings, carpeting, color palette is different and very importantly you'll see in the back corner there two coffee machines so they serve coffee here uh, from 6 a.m so i'm a few few hours early um, which means i'm stuck with the ship's uh, pre-made coffee which is not as nice as the barista coffee
Now we're coming into New York this morning and arrival is from about five o'clock going under Verzano, but I forgot to put my clock back, so I'm up very early. But I um, thought this was a good opportunity to show you the rest of the ship before we disembark. So this is the King's Court. Self-service coffee and tea. Here's where the buffet is set up. So there's all sorts of different options, hot food. Over here, the cold foods and cereals for breakfast and then at lunchtime and dinner, it's also available for you to help yourselves. Now this space was greatly changed as well. And those of you who remember the original King's Court occupying the same space, but a little bit more confusing in its layout with multiple buffet stations. This one now they've pulled it together into one, one buffet. There is a secondary station towards the aft, which serves a slightly different selection. So during the day you'll find your burgers, um, pizza and other grill foods in the back part of King's Court, just past Stairway C, which is where we are now. And they added these wavy ceilings in, which are quite cool. Keep going through. So the two grills, princess grills in here, it's usually lit up and all pretty. I think because of the time of day that I'm coming in here. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, try, and, we'll try and get in there later. Or oh, I'm gonna just stick a, a nice picture of the princess grill over the screen now so that you can see how it looks. Might do the same with queen's grill, but just to let you know, the queen's grill is on the other side of the ship, uh, on the starboard side of deck seven. And uh, on the screen now, you see some pictures from our meal in Queen's Grill. Queen's Grill's very nice uh, quality of food. Okay, so let's uh, head up the stairway D. And we'll go to the front of the ship and check out the Commodore Club. So at the aft end of deck nine was where we're standing at the moment. Head down one level and you'll go to the veranda, which is a Queen Mary II uh, alternate dining venue. Here on deck nine as well, you'll see there's lots of very elegant uh, Queen's Grill cabins and the concierge lounge for Queen's Grill passengers in the middle of the space. But we're gonna go forward now to the Commodore Club. down the corridor here. Sometime later, and we're almost there, she's a very big ship, which means you get a lot of exercise walking around. Queen Mary 2 is also wheelchair friendly, accessible throughout the vessel, so lots of ramps, allowing for easy access. Now, there's an interesting problem because I can't get in. But that's the Commodore Club in the front here. Let's see if the other side's open. And of course, at uh, five to four, perhaps, uh, perhaps not. Ah, yes, this is better. So here we have the Commodore Club. And the fantastic model of Queen Mary II shows her bulbous bow. It's 
stabilizers and the pods. And here's the, the lounge with the beautiful forward facing windows. This is where I captured the bow video, the bow wave, which um, is linked for you to take a look at if you'd like to have a look at that. Another starburst carpet. Coming into the lift. Pictures of old Kunai chips all over the place, which is just brilliant. And we got up to 11 to see the Atlantic Room. Deck 11. Right, here we are. Deck 11. Again, it's all dark this morning. Anyway, as you can see from the tables, the Atlantic Room is the card room. Usually brightly illuminated. What we'll do is we'll go out that we'll door onto the observation platform for our arrival into New York. And here we are in New York with the Manhattan skyline in the background there. This brings to an end the Cunard Southampton 100th anniversary celebration voyage on Queen Mary 2. Thanks so much for joining me for the crossing. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any comments do leave them in the comment section below. Thanks once again and see you on the next voyage.